answering Greg's question about transferring linear speed to angular speed. Um, so basically looking at the idea that at, at some point I want this club to go kind of whipping through impact and create a lot of speed. Um, so there's two different ideas here. There's how I'm applying force or creating speed in the grip and then how I'm going to transfer that speed to the club head. Now this, this question actually has a pretty simple answer. The, the simple answer is that I want to use my body to pull on the club in a specific direction that causes the club to kick out as opposed to using my hands to just throw the club out. So essentially if I was in this position right here and I anchor the club with my right hand if I pull like this that's going to cause the club to go throwing out towards the golf ball that's more of what I want to get as opposed to if I anchor here with my left hand and I was to then throw the club by kind of pushing on the club with my hands so what many amateurs do is they get to a certain point somewhere around here and then they start using the wrists and kind of twisting the grip and throwing the club down to the golf ball. Ideally, what you're going to do is you are going to apply force in the direction of the grip during the whole swing. So when I'm up here, I'm going to apply force at this camera. Boom. Now when I'm here, I'm going to use body rotation to apply force briefly down at the ground. But now that I'm here, I'm going to apply force out in front of the golf ball. That's kind of the white movement right there. And that brought the club head below um, parallel. Now as I start applying force this way, that's going to then take that linear speed and convert it to angular and get it to pull out or, or get the club to kick out and go down towards the ground and into the golf ball. This, this concept of basically using my body rotation and the direction that I'm pulling in order to create, create the angular speed tends to create more of this flat spot at the bottom that gives us a little bit more consistency. So if you struggle with um, either getting this too soon, so if I use just my hands to get that, um, to create that angular speed, then what'll happen is it's pretty slow and I just kind of like sweep the whole thing. So I go angular first and then I go linear second. Ideally, because of creating some lag and using my body sequence, I'm going to tend to go linear a lot longer into the, the downswing and that linear speed is eventually going to create the angular speed. So if you pay attention to some of the, the subtleties in the release videos and the transition videos, you'll figure out how to connect this kind of angular speed, but some t or uh, linear speed to angular speed. But some, sometimes for golfers like Greg who want to be able to visualize it a little bit better, hopefully the idea of applying force along the grip the entire swing helps clarify things. So now just demonstrating those two different ways. So that one there, I'm basically feeling like I'm pulling along the club and the club just goes down to the ball because of my, my bracing and the, the counter movement down during the release versus if I bring it up and I start kind of throwing it at the ball, I was able to create some good contact there and I hit a reasonable shot for this particular case. Um, but it feels like it's a lot more timing dependent because I'm using my hands and not creating as good a flat spot. So get that body leading the swing, learn how to use the arms to support them, and that'll help you solve the puzzle of transferring that linear speed into angular in the most efficient way. If you like this video, then click the link in the description below and head over to golfsmartacademy.com for a free trial membership. It's free, you don't even have to put in your credit card. We have over 900 videos to help you diagnose and then train to improve your golf swing. Golf Smart Academy is the ultimate resource for do-it-yourself golfers. Yeah.